Two days ago, I almost bought a house. Well, almost is probably a bit of an exaggeration, but it certainly was the closest I've come to buying a property. Last year, this block of townhouses was built in our neighbourhood. They were selling each one for about $420,000. Even estimates from this month suggest they're worth about $410,000 each, with high confidence. But the other day, when I was walking past, I noticed that there was still a for sale sign out the front. I thought either somebody bought it last year and wanted to get rid of it for whatever reason, or some of the original townhouses were still for sale. I went and checked online just to see how much they were. $280,000. I thought, what the heck's going on here? $420,000 to $280,000 in less than a year. That's a reduction of 33%. So I contacted the real estate agent asking him about the council rates, body corporate, etc., and to arrange a viewing. He was eager for me to come in and have a look that very same day. He sent through the annual fees as follows. Body corporate, $1,288. Sinking fund, $444. Council rates, $1,364. And water rates, $600. So that's a total of $3,697 a year. He also told us that we would be eligible for the Queensland First Home homeowner's grant of $15,000 as the residence has never been lived in. My wife and I worked out how much coin we could scrape together. If we sold all our investments and kept a little bit in the bank for emergencies, we could afford at most $250,000. Plus, the first homeowner's grant of $15,000 would mean that we could make an offer of $265,000 on the house. Doable, I thought. After school, my family and I went to meet the agent at the property. He hadn't arrived yet, so we had a little bit of a sticky beat. The first thing that we noticed was that the garage door had a big dent in it. It's a bit hard to see in this photo, but trust me, there's a big dent there. Secondly, the front walkway was a little bit overgrown, but that's no big deal. But then when I looked down the side of the house, clearly the gardens hadn't been maintained. Again, no big deal. But then I thought that if you were selling a new property, you'd at least make an effort to make it look a little bit respectable. The gutters clearly hadn't been cleaned out in a while, if ever. There were plants and stuff growing out of them. I started to feel like that something was amiss. I mean, such a huge price reduction and the property wasn't being maintained. Finally, the agent arrived and showed us inside the property. I didn't take any pictures of the inside, so I'll just have to show you some that I've downloaded from their website. Obviously, pictures taken by real estate agents are professionally done with good lighting and all the rest of it, but the one thing that we noticed was that the place was incredibly dark. Even though we were there when the sun was shining bright, there was very little natural light coming in on the ground floor. In terms of brightness, the second floor was okay, but the windows didn't have any screens on them. These ceiling fans that you can see were just above my head, and I'm not that tall, so you can estimate that the window sills weren't even up to my waist. You see, we've got two small children, so if the windows were open, the kids could easily slip out and plummet to the ground below. The agent told us to fit decent security screens to all the windows would cost us about eight to $10,000. We also noticed that there were lots of marks and scratches on the walls, bits of leftover builder's tape stuck on the corners, etc. It looked like the builders hadn't cleaned up properly. We asked the agent about it, and he was really honest with us. He told us that ordinarily, when buying a new home, the builders would come back and clean up all their mess and repair any dents and scratches, but in this case, that wouldn't be happening. He said the developer had recently gone bankrupt and would not be spending any more money on the property. They were desperate to sell, hence the price tag, but unfortunately, it was what you see is what you get. He told us that if we offered $265,000, that we'd most likely get it. We went home and had a think about it. Although it was an okay place, our kids didn't like it. My wife didn't like it. I didn't particularly like it, and there were so many marks, scratches, and dents. In my opinion, if I'm going to buy a brand new home, I'd expect it to be in brand new condition. The fact that it wasn't, and the fact that we'd have to sell all our investments to purchase it, probably tells us that we shouldn't be buying it. And I think this story is indicative of the property market in Australia. Even at $280,000, we thought this townhouse was too expensive. The fact that the developers had gone out of business clearly means they couldn't sell them for the original asking price of $410,000, but yet all the websites are still saying that that's how much they're worth. The fact that we didn't want to buy it for $280,000, and clearly nobody else wants to buy it for that price, if they did, it would already be sold, means that all these estimates of house prices are pretty much made up 
up. It's not their true value. Imagine if you were one of the people who bought a similar sized townhouse in Sydney for over a million dollars. I mean, that price is just absurd. You'd be working all your life just to pay off your mortgage, and for what? So that you can say that you live 10 kilometres from the Sydney CBD? Anyway, that was my little experience with almost buying a house. I'm glad I did it, just so I know how dodgy things have become in the property market in Australia. What about yourself? Have you had any interesting housing experiences recently where clearly the asking price is nowhere near the real price or the true value of the property? Let me know below.